back. I see you. Okay. Can I? <laughs> Are you going to let me talk to these people? Huh? Are you gonna let me talk to these people or are you just gonna be like, mama, I'm jealous because you're talking to something else and not me. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the honey set. I'm hoping that Moose is going to allow us to have a good conversation up here in the high tunnel. Um, we've been kind of slowly chipping away, fixing some things. Uh, we hung our lights back up. I took down my poles back there. Um, I went ahead and took those down because I use those for our tomahawk hooks. Um, so when I grew tomatoes, uh, indeterminate tomatoes, I allowed them to climb up. But I've kind of been talking about how, <laughs> I'm gonna fall over. Um, I've been talking about how our, our tomato high tunnel is, I'm taking a pause on it. Um, I, I don't actually, I don't have any plans to grow tomatoes in here again, actually. Um, and I know that there are sometimes there's blessing in disguises. Um, so I'm just going to take that and accept that this is a blessing in disguise because now this opens up a whole new realm of things that I can grow in here. Um, so here in the next few weeks, my son is actually going to come and help me uh, clean it all up. I'm going to bring the pressure washer in here. I'm just going to like it's going to be vamped um make sure that everything is running and working the same that it was before and uh, i'm going to start growing some things now this high tunnel we bought second hand from a nursery um, bought it on sale it was great and it has been an awesome place to grow uh, but i do have will you stop it i do have plans to eventually in the next couple of years um do a different high tunnel one that's a little bit bigger and one that i can actually bring my tractor into while we're up here i am going to show you one of the things that we are going to try that is it that is new i've never actually grown them grown in them um but i wanted to kind of show you because i think that they were cool come here moose come here so right here i bought um from my good friends over at Haas Tools. They have been so awesome. Like I love I just love working with them. Um but I was super excited to see these. Come here. <laughs> Come here, Moose. So these are well it's gonna be Moose's dog bed. Um <laughs> come here. These are the hundred gallon um grow bags excuse me sir excuse me can you please get out of it i'm growing a moose guys i'm growing a moose um these are the 100 gallon grow bags that Hoss tools offers now they have a few different sizes uh, i went ahead and i just got i purchased about 10 of them um, and we're gonna kind of clean this space moose <laughs> so i purchased 10 of them because I was gonna go ahead and build, um, we were gonna go ahead and build raised beds in here, but when my husband was like, well babe, like I know this is not the height, like I can build raised beds in here, yes, okay? But let me just tell you, the honeydew list for my poor sweet husband is uh and it's not so much a honey do list i mean this is our life like we do a lot like right now he is up there working up on the barn shop um he's been milling lumber for the ceiling of the barn shop and he would have absolutely stopped and built me raised garden beds but right now one of the things that he's actually building is new hive stands for our our bees um, but when I came across these grow bags, I was like, you know what, this might actually be a perfect, it might be a perfect solution for me right now. Okay. Because I want something that is going to be deep enough, but I don't want something that's too massive. I know that this place is, this space is going to be used, um, in a different light. I want to grow. Uh, turmeric. I want to grow ginger. I want to grow the things that don't necessarily grow well outside. But while we're up here, I wanted to talk about some of the new uh, medicinal seeds. Not really new medicinal seeds, but 
There are a few actually that I have not grown before and I want I want to have a I want to have a conversation with you about them. All right, I think Moose had a pretty good idea about sitting sitting in the grow bag cuz my I'm going to get dirty, but that's okay. So this year I've got a lot of really fun, exciting things planned for the garden, um, planned for the medicinal garden, planned for the workshops, and one of them is kind of creating the space to be able to have people come in and, and learn how to start their medicinal garden. And if you're interested in learning about the workshops that I have coming up, I will put my website down below. Um, we are also, Jill and I are also working on a few other fun projects. So we put out an ebook about winter wellness, um, some of our favorite recipes. And then we also put out a really cool herbalism course, which is basically how to build your home apothecary. Now I am going, you're gonna be one of the the first to kind of know, um, hopefully, maybe. I'm gonna kind of share it out pretty soon. Well, you know what, whatever, we're just gonna share it. So we are also getting ready to launch our first ebook on how to grow a medicinal garden. So this is gonna be great because a lot of people are really interested in learning about herbs. Um, so her strong suit is gardening and growing and like, she's amazing <laughs> with that knowledge um, so we're combining our knowledge and we're putting together another ebook that is i think as of right now like 122 pages um, about talking about plants that you can grow in your garden but not just grow in your garden but what do you do with it after that so i'm also sharing some recipes um, and then her and I are, we're just, we're putting it together. So I feel like that's going to be launched here in the next couple of weeks. If we have the opt-in form ready, which I believe we will, I will put this down in the description so that you can get automatic notification. And if you are interested in learning about herbalism and like how to get started, we will put in the course. All that course information is down below, right in the website. Um, but I am super excited to talk about the medicinal seeds that I'm going to grow this year. Now I grow the basics all the way up to some of the ones that are like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Uh, chamomile, thyme, oregano, rosemary, um, all of them, the mints, lemon balm, motherwort, St. John's wort, which I'm going to have a conversation about that one uh, with you guys this year. But there are a few that I'm excited to to grow. And I wanted to share this with you because I thought that this was a great little pack. Uh, but this is Survival Garden Seeds, uh, their home apothecary in a bag. So there's 36 medicinal seeds that come in this. And I will, if you are interested, I have a coupon that I can share with you that will be down there. But I'm pretty sure I have them all here. And I hope I do because they also sent me some other ones that I thought would be fun. Um, but I would highly recommend that you go check them out. Going through the seeds, they had, they, you know, they have chamomile, um, fennel, echinacea, feverfew, uh, which you, if you are interested in how I use feverfew for migraine prevention, that's a pretty good video and, and I will put that all um, down below, whorehound, hyssop, the lamb's ear. Um, hold on, there was one that I was like, oh, I'm very excited about that one because lemon balm, lavender, marigold. I'll show you all of these. Um, marshmallow, which I'm, oh no, moose. Honey, you're gonna knock my camera over, okay. Come here, Moose. Come here. You are just a bubby. Um, there, I'll make sure mugwort, which mugwort, I actually don't talk about mugwort as much, but I probably should. That one is definitely a good sleep, a sleep one. You puppy are just all over the place. Um, anise, I love anise. That is makes a great, okay, there it is. Black cumin so this one right here out of the entire pack this one has been the most like hmm I really need to I really need to like 
dive in a little bit deeper uh, to black cumin. So I started using black cumin seed whenever I feel like there's something that's kind of like not coming, like something that's kind of coming on. Um, I will actually take the black cumin seed and I will uh, put it in some honey and then I will just take it straight. Now there are many benefits to black cumin seed oil. That's one that a lot of people, uh, I feel like a lot of people are using black cumin, um, black cumin seed oil. But for me, every single time I have felt like something is coming on, um, and I learned this about four years ago, three years ago. I learned this about three or four years ago. Yeah, about four years ago. Um, and every single time I do it, I'm like, I wake up the next morning and I feel fine. So there's definitely something to it. I do want to go into more of the medicinal uh, byproducts of black cumin. And as we start planting this, um, as we start talking about this, I, I will put in some, some recipes, uh, possibly do like a blog post on it. Uh, but this one right here is one that I am like super pumped about. And I'm very excited to, to see, you know, how I gotta learn this one, okay? <laughs> like, so this is on my top priority to learn and probably one of the, the most, ex not exciting, but one of the herbs that I'm super excited to, to learn about. Um, mainly because I have been using black cumin seed and I do notice the difference and I, I just, this is like top priority for me. Um, but I, I do invite you to go check out uh, the uh, Survival Garden Seeds Company. Um, I will put a link down below. I have a coupon code that I get to share with you guys uh, for certain items that I am going to be growing um, and obviously take you guys along with me. The other thing that I am excited to share with you is um, I, I know that you, if you haven't followed one of my other favorite medicinal herbs that I grow here on our homestead is Avena sativa, which is oats. Um, and oats, it, you know, just basically the, the concept of oat, oatmeal, uh, but I make my own milky sage oats tincture and it's a nerve tonic. I use milky sage oats uh, as the immature oat tops tinctured. I have a whole video on that. And then we also harvest the oat straw and that is what we'll put into our teas as well. Um, very nourishing, very, very nourishing and definitely one of my daily I'm using this <laughs> and I have, you know, a freezer full of immature oat tops and I've got a massive tincture bottle. I keep one in my house, one in my car, one in the apothecary. Um, that is my go-to herb of choice. Uh, but I have been trying to find oats um, to offer because a lot of people have been like, well, where do you get your oats? And so upon talking to uh, Survival Garden Seeds, they said like, oh, we have them. So this is a two pound bag of oats. And I've got to do a little bit of like, you know, how much space do you need to grow a two pound bag? I just threw a bunch of seeds down and I harvested a beautiful patch of oats. Um, this is great. I mean, this is a food source. You've got the oat tops, you've got the oat straws that you can use. Um, and yeah, so this is going to be fun. I am excited to extend my oat garden, um, for this next year. And I probably need to look at some dates and kind of get an idea <laughs> on when I actually have to plant these because I just threw it on the ground and it grew. Um, but I do want to be a little bit better this go around. Uh, so yeah, so I'm excited about this. And if you are interested in growing oats, uh, Venus sativa, they have it. And I will put that link along with all of this. It's on my website too, um, with the house tools information on the, uh, the grow bags as well. Now I also hopped on to uh, Baker. I also hopped on to Baker Creek. Um, they've got a really nice selection of some rare things. Uh, this one's not so rare. I did grow it last year, but I'm a little hesitant that it's not going to come back. And I wanted to use 
Um, I wanted to get some seeds for my workshop that we have, one of the first workshops, which is, you know, starting your medicinal garden. Um, so I wanted to get a few seeds for everybody to actually learn how to start. Um, and the butterfly pea was definitely like, I love this one, it's a beautiful flower. When you harvest the flower and you brew it into a tea, it's purple, uh, but then when you add a little bit of citrus or lemon into it, it changes, the pH changes and it turns pink and it's very whimsical and just, it, it's pretty good too. So very excited about that one. Um, I also got um, this one from my Thai grandmother, uh, which is the Angiographis. There is a whole lot of information about Angiographis, especially when it comes to uh, colds, viruses, all of that. So I, I was kind of pumped to be able to get some Angiographis uh, seeds. We're gonna try to grow some. My Thai grandmother was like, you know, this is a plant in her country that a lot of, uh, a lot of people are actually using um, to help with any illness and all that. Now, it is bitter. It is known as the king of bitters and it is, it is very bitter. Um, so I was excited to, to get, get some of that. I'm also going to try my luck with some artichokes as well. I just thought it would be fun to see if I can. I've never grown artichokes. I love artichokes. Uh, artichokes, we eat them, but then also I've actually used artichokes to make a bitter, which is a, a digestive aid. Um, at some artichokes, some fennel, uh, some anise, and it makes a really good, makes a really good bitter. Um, just to kind of help get your, get stuff flowing in your, in your digestive system um, so that it helps obviously digest food. And then the last one that I'm kind of really interested in growing, uh, I, I gotta do some research on this one a little bit more. I've actually never used Moringa, but I have been reading quite a bit about its antioxidants properties and the leaves and how it basically has, the leaves have the same amount of potassium that are, are in bananas. Now I've again never <laughs> grown this one um and i've actually never used it but i want something to saying like hey learn you know learn a little bit more and read and you know introduce a new plant and that's really honestly what i feel like is is best about gardening you don't want to get stagnant you know you want to introduce something new something exciting it keeps your mind kind of growing and and going and you know i invite you to to start a medicinal garden whether it is in pots on your on your balcony or you know thrown out in your yard like i did with the with the oats um it doesn't have to be a perfect garden you know it doesn't have to be in a great clean row my garden is far from perfect. I have weeds in it, but we use the weeds, you know? <laughs> so I don't want you to be overwhelmed when it comes to, to gardening or growing the medicinal plants. Um, and if you are not, you know, growing them, then start looking outside, foraging for them. Most of the plants that we use, <laughs> most of the plants that we use, we do go out and forage for. Um, and that's just, you know, that's just part of it. But we do very much, we do very much like to grow, grow things. Um, this last year, one of the first plants that I was excited, a new plant that I was excited to see if I can grow and be a rule breaker was uh, ashwagandha. And so that actually surprisingly grew really good out here. I was able to harvest a lot of the berries um, and I pulled some of the roots. I did leave some in the ground still, uh, just to kind of see like, what's it gonna do, you know? But I did, uh, I believe what I'm probably gonna have to do is just harvest, like grow it every year and just pull it up, harvest the root and then regrow it um, instead of trying to let it come back. Cause I, that's the one thing I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna come back. 
um, because of our, our cold temperatures. But, you know, it's a science experiment and, you know, I harvested so many seeds. It's, I mean, it, it blows my mind. Like it only took me 20 seed to grow thousands of seeds. So now this year, I'm gonna just take the seeds, plant them again, and then just harvest them. Um, harvest them just for the roots. Um, I did harvest them kind of going into fall so that the emphasis of the actual plant was kind of going back into the root um, versus, you know, harvesting it in spring. I don't think I took you guys along with me on that and I'm ap I'll apologize right now. But a lot of the times this garden, um, I do take you guys with me, but this garden means more to me sometimes, you know, for myself, you know, the healing aspect of it, like what it has to offer. Um, and I, I'm a firm believer that it's okay to put the camera down and it is okay to take a break. In the next couple of weeks, we will be completing this space and my son is gonna help me fill all of these beds. So I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to record while we fill these beds. Um, I do respect my kids when it comes to like, hey, mom's got a camera rolling. Like, are you comfortable? If they're not, we put the camera down. So anticipate this pace kind of getting done. The other thing that I'm excited about, which I think I'm gonna try to bring you guys with me when I go to do this, um, but I came across a really awesome program, which is called Seed Time, and we'll talk more about that. But basically, like when you're looking at a pile of seeds on the ground and you're just kind of like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> when am I planting this? How am I gonna do this? Uh, seed Time is a really awesome program that you put everything in and it will kind of help input and tell you like when do you plant it based off of your zone. So it basically like takes it, takes this big old mess and puts it in like a really nice organized, <laughs> organized program for you to not have to think or freak out or be like, what am I doing? So that is definitely coming um, when I sit down on the computer. I'm definitely getting excited about this gardening season and I cannot wait to start planting things. So, as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye, guys.